In order to make 3D assets for Spark, we need to hop into a new program. I prefer Cinema 4D, but Blender is a great free option. So let's hop into Cinema 4D. To make this meteorite, we're going to make a sphere and then add a bunch of deformation to it. So with the sphere, we'll change it to a hexahedron and crank up these segments to, say, 500. That way we have a lot of information to work with. Now to get the detail, we're going to add a displacer deformer and we'll drop it inside of the sphere. With it selected, go down to shading and add a noise to the shader. The black and white values of this noise push and pull the polygons up here. Now let's select the noise and change it from just a standard noise to Luca and change the global scale up to 5,000. Now we can see there's just a little bit going on. If we hit in A, we can go back to shaded view. And if we go back up and go to the object tab, we can increase this to kind of push this out. So now we have this nice general shape of a meteorite, but it looks way too uniform. All these curves are really smooth. So we need to add some more detail. So let's add another deformer or a displacer deformer and drop that under the first one. And in this one, in the shading tab, we'll add another noise and use Booyah. And again, increase the global scale to 500. Now you can see we're starting to get some fun information here. Going back to the object tab, we can change the height to a place we like. Let's just push it down a little bit. Now here you can see there's some overlapping polygons, so we need to fix that. In order to do that, let's add a smoothing deformer and drop that underneath. So that smooths everything out quite a lot, so it fixes the issue, but we lose a lot of that detail. So let's pull it back a bit until we find a happy medium. That's looking pretty good to me. I'm going to go and hide this work plane just so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Now I'm pretty happy with this meteorite shape so far. So I'm going to take this and bake it down to a single mesh. Now I can hide this and we just have the straight polygon information. We don't have any deformation going on. Now to make sure Everything's looking good. I'm just going to take a look, make sure we're not overlapping anywhere. Looks like we are here. So if we hit Shift C, we can bring up this little widget here and type in smooth. Now, this is a, a brush in Cinema 4D. And so now we can manually paint these and fix the issues without losing information all over. To see this better, we can hit Control Tab to zoom into the full view. Now that's looking pretty good. So let's rename this to Meteorite High. And then duplicate this. We're going to make a low version. That way we can take all this high-res information and bake it down into a normal map. We'll hide the high one and work on this low version. So Cinema 4D does have a remesh object and this does a decent job at remeshing, but with organic shapes like this, it often doesn't do a great job. So I prefer using the extension called Quad Remesher. With the object selected, you can start this plugin and then just type in the number of polygons you want. And there's options here, but the defaults are pretty solid. And we'll see what happens. It looks like it did a good job. Let's take a look. Yeah, all that detail looks great. And if we switch to the wireframe shaded view by hitting NB, 
we can see that edge flow is pretty nice. So we can delete this source version and then rename this back to meteorite low. Now we need to take the information of this high version and transfer it over to this low version using a normal map. To do that, first we need to unwrap this meteorite low in the UV edit option. So currently there's no material and no UVs on this object. So let's set UVW from projection. And let's just choose spherical. Now that successfully unwrapped the whole thing, but it's not the best shape. So let's see if we can automatic unwrap it. Now that did a decent job. Some of these smaller islands aren't ideal, but it's good enough for these purposes. Now let's switch back to the normal view and bake these normals. So first we need to make a material and apply it to this meteorite. So let's double click down here and change this name to Matt Meteorite and drag it onto this object. And now with this selected, go to Object, Bake Material. And here, all we're looking for is the normal map. So check that on and under the source, select the high res version and change the method to tangent. And then under tag, we need to set the file path. So it looks like it's already set to models meteorite text and meteorite low looks good. And let's version this just in case we have to do this again. And I'll change the format to PNG and the resolution to 1024 by 1024. Now we can click preview to get a rough image of what it's going to look like. And that's not the normal map, that's more the lighting information. But when we bake this, it should pop in the normals. All right, that was fast. Now let's open the meteorite and take a look at the file at output. That does look correct. So we'll drag it into the normals over here. First select normal, then drag that in. So let's see what happens. So we get some of that information. It looks a little soft and that's because this viewport is previewing a low res version, but let's switch to 1024. So now you can see we get a lot of this nice detail, even though the mesh itself is quite low res. And to see this better, let's drop it in a light and move that around. So now you can see there's a lot of good detail there. And if we turn off the normals on this material, that's what we're actually working with, which is very smooth, very basic. So this normal map is able to add a lot of detail. So now we have a low res meteorite and a normal map adding high res detail. Now let's export this for Spark. With it selected, go to File, Export Selected Objects As, and choose FBX. We want Selection Only, Include the Normals, No Animation, No Materials, because we'll make those inside of Spark. And then I'll make a folder called Exports, and drop it in there. And because the normal map already baked out, we don't have to export that separately. And that's all it takes. We made a high res meteorite and then made a low poly version and then baked the normal information from the high res mesh down to the low res mesh.